What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and I built the Xbox Series X as a gaming PC. Let's check it out. So just last week, Microsoft announced the Series X, and over the past few days, they've more so confirmed the hardware that's gonna be inside the upcoming generation. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at that and then build an equivalent gaming PC so you can get an idea of what to expect. So here's what we know so far about the upcoming hardware. It'll have an eight core Zen 2 CPU targeting 3.5 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM with 13 allocated for games and the other three for the OS, a GPU capable of ray tracing, 4K60, 4K 120, and even 8K they said as a possibility. And this is gonna be a custom AMD GPU flexing at 12 teraflops. And finally, an NVMe SSD for storage. And then this is all the components we'll be using today and how it's gonna to translate to the new Xbox hardware. For each one, we'll talk about its benefits for the build and how it's gonna to compare to what we'll see in the Series X. So first up for the case, this is the Osmi from Spartex. Visually, the Series X looks pretty unique with that cuboid shape. And this is probably one of the closest ones I found on the market today. It's 255 millimeters tall and 180 millimeters wide. Comparing that to what we'll see with the Series X, it'll be roughly 325 millimeters tall and 158 millimeters wide on all four sides, leaving our Osmi case a little bit shorter, but wider as well. But this is relatively the same shape we'll see with an exhaust up top, but the Osmi does have this elevated platform on the bottom for our GPU to dissipate the heat. Now into the hardware, for our CPU, we're going with the Ryzen 7 2700, which is an eight core 16 thread chip running stock at 3.2 gigahertz out of the box, but it can be pushed to 4.1 max boost. And since their custom CPU for the Xbox on paper, in theory is identical to the FX 8320, I'm sure they're gonna be using a more current chipset obviously in this ballpark. And on the market, this one just makes the most sense when comparing the two. Then with this case and the form factor, we're obviously gonna need an ITX motherboard. And that's where the Gigabyte B450i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi comes in. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi as the name implies, which all consoles have as well. And it's gonna be an ideal fit for the rest of the hardware. Now the Xbox is not gonna be using a branded motherboard like this, but since we don't have access to a more plain Jane board, this one's gonna make do here. Now again, with this Osmi case being so compact, we're gonna be pretty limited when it comes to our hardware choices, especially in terms of cooling. But the Noctua NHL9A is gonna be our cooler of choice. It sits only 37 millimeters tall, which is perfect. And it's actually only one of few recommended coolers for this case. Now the CPU does come with their Race Spire cooler inside the box for you, but obviously it's not gonna fit here. And I know the Noctua fan doesn't look, you know, too appealing by any means, but we're not gonna see that once the build is done. And we know it'll be doing a good job of keeping the 2700 running cool and quiet. Now next for RAM, nothing fancy, and you can opt to go a different route in your own build if you were to replicate this. I'm just repurposing 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LED RAM from an older build. And since they're using 16 as well, again, 13 gigs for game and the other three for the OS, all you're gonna need is two sticks of eight gigabyte DDR4 DIMMs. These were $95, although you can find Corsair LPX RAM for nearly half the price of this. So one of the less flashy upgrades, but definitely an important one that we're gonna be seeing in the upcoming Xbox as well as the PS5, an NVMe SSD. It is confirmed they'll finally be using these, which is gonna greatly cut down on load times in games. But also memory has become so cheap over the years that a one terabyte NVMe SSD just seems like a no brainer to include in all Xboxes, especially since you know games are getting bigger and bigger. So there's really no excuse to not give us a terabyte, they better. And I have a terabyte stick here from AdLink. And just like that, we're nearly done. Now for the GPU, it's tough to say how much graphics are really going to improve. Cause you look at the modern state of PC gaming and some games look fantastic, yes, but there haven't been any really major leaps in recent years. Games like Battlefield 5 looks fantastic, modded Skyrim, obviously still, even Crisis 2 and 3 are some of the more impressive titles still, but nothing that makes you think next gen, you know? Um, however, what is mind blowing is their estimated graphical hardware they'll be using. If it's gonna be in the ballpark of running 4K 120 or even 8K with ray tracing and at 12 teraflops, it's sounding like a 2080 Super or a 2080 Ti, but those are still hella expensive. So for our PC, we're gonna be using a Gigabyte RTX 2070 Mini. 
And I picked this one up for a few reasons. One, the size, it's just 170 millimeters long, which is the maximum GPU length we can actually use in this case. And remember, the Xbox is even smaller, but odds are they're gonna be mounting it vertically inside. But also I went with this because their custom GPU just doesn't exist right now. They said it's gonna have ray tracing, but it's a custom AMD GPU, and there are no Radeon graphics cards with ray tracing on the market. So it sounds like a mix to me of a 2080 Super and something like a Radeon 5700 XT, maybe? Now I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of upscaling involved, but it's still gonna be interesting to see. But even still, our 2070 Mini is gonna give us a nice performance boost over today's consoles at least, and even for most modern PCs, it's a pretty powerful card. Then speaking of power, once our hardware is all inside the Osmi case, that leaves us with one last thing, our power supply. From Corsair, we have the SF600, an SFX form factor to fit inside the case. It's modular as well, so we can remove the excess cables that we won't be needing to free up some space inside. And it's zero RPM fan mode is gonna keep this thing nice and silent until we start pushing the system under load. Then just like that, once we slide back on the outer shell to the frame and lock it all down, we have a super tiny and compact Xbox Series X equivalent gaming PC. Now, some other things to note before we move on, you might be asking, where is the disc tray? And that's fair because consoles have a disc tray. Well, this one does, the code Anaconda. The, the, the less powerful upcoming one, it's gonna be more on par with the Xbox One S, it's gonna be discless. That's code Lockhart, but we didn't build that version. But guess what? Osmi actually has a disc loading slot on the top. And if you wanted to include a DVD drive or an optical drive, you can easily do that. So if you still have PC games on a disc, you're in luck, but get with the times. Second, we saw that subtle green glow on the top of the Xbox console. So what I did was I threw a 140 millimeter Fantex digital halo underneath the included 140 millimeter Be Quiet fan on the top of the case. This way you can change it to green in the settings to replicate that upcoming Xbox look, or you can make it glow whatever color you want. And the third note, this is designed to sit vertically on your desk or an entertainment center, because it's an ITX PC case, whereas the upcoming Xbox is said to sit vertically like we saw, or if you want, you could lay it down horizontally on its side to fit more for that living room setting. Now the price, this is where it gets interesting. And obviously the price of the new Xbox Series X is gonna be more affordable than what we have here, but let's break it all down. Our CPU was 150, the cooler itself was 40, the motherboard, 120. 16 gigs of RAM, $95. The graphics card, 500. An NVMe SSD, 120. The Osmi case, 195. Then the SFX power supply, 115. Not including Windows, obviously, but you can get that for dirt cheap. YourCDKey.com, like 12 bucks. So rounding that total, this came to $1,330. Now obviously, that's not what the upcoming Xbox is gonna cost, okay? And there's a reason why this is so expensive, but it's probably gonna be a third at most. So first off, eliminate the 250 for the case, okay? They're not gonna be using this case, they're gonna be manufacturing their own in bulk of hundreds of thousands of cases, all plastic, it's gonna cost them cents to produce. Same thing with their custom CPU and graphics card. They'll be mass produced as well, and it's gonna be nowhere near the cost of our two components combined. That'll then leave things like the NVMe SSD, the cooler, their power supply, and their motherboard. It's all gonna be bought in bulk, produced by the thousands for very, very cheap. So like I said, 1,330 for our console, but if they could push this to around 699, and I'll even give a $100 ballpark anywhere in there from 699 to 799 or 699 to 599. If the hardware they're telling us is gonna be inside that, especially trying to push 4K 60, 4K 120, or even 8K in the future, even though it's probably gonna be upscaling, that's gonna be a pretty powerful console. So if you can hit anywhere around six to $700, that's gonna be an absolute win for the consumer. Now, last thing to wrap up, benchmarks. Just for a quick glimpse in Time Spy at 4K and 3D Mark, we got a score of 3,874, which is actually 40% better when you take a look at their comparison tool to all other PCs that ran the same exact test. I was actually pretty surprised by that. And then since it's an RTX graphics card, I wanted to try their Port Royal RTX benchmark, and we hit just below 5,000 at 4,999. 
So for the sake of this video, those are the two main benchmarks I did, but gaming has been great on it. If you do want to see me do more in-depth benchmarks on certain games, let me know down below in what games you'd want to see. I didn't do that for this video because I didn't want to make this video a half hour long. And second, who knows what games we're going to be seeing next year for the console. So benchmarking PC games today wouldn't really be, you know, too on par with what we'll see. But either way, if you do want to see that, let me know and I could drop a part two of this video. But in the end, this was overall a pretty fun build. It was tough to get the turnaround out within the last week, finding out the reveal, the hardware, and then bringing this to life. But altogether, this is what we're going to expect for the Xbox Series X. And I hope you liked this video, guys. It was, a, it was a fun one for sure. If you did, let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.